from the Anza County government. Hope has a comment. Hi, everyone viewing at home. Um, welcome to our November 5th meeting of the Jacksonville Youth Council. Um, we have a very special guest today, um, Ms. Whitney Jezik. And if we're first going to go around and introduce ourselves. I'm Tamara. Um, I'm your current chairman, and I'm from Anza Early College. I'm Ruth Ann Olson. I'm the vice chairman, and I am from Wilson Town School. I'm Michael Whitner. I'm Southwest representative, and I'm from Southwest High School. I'm Ryan Warren, and I am a Onslow Virtual School representative. I'm Whitney Jezik. I'm the Child Health and Immunization uh, Supervisor with the Onslow County Health Department. And I'm Pamela Trapley, your Neighborhood Improvement Services Coordinator and Staff Liaison for the Jacksonville Youth Council. All right, so um, if we could get started with um, just tell us a little bit about you, I guess, a little more about you. Okay, a little bit more about me. Well, um, I've been in public health for a little over seven years, and there is a big difference between what I used to do and in public health. So just to kind of define what that is, public health is really about keeping the well well. It's empowering people to make healthier choices and healthier decisions for their lives and how to prevent things from happening, whether it's through vaccination, through its education, or through right now what we're talking about most of the time is COVID. You know, the three W's, wear your mask. And it's not just wear your mask, but wear your mask like you're supposed to wear your mask. And then wait, wait six feet apart. Remember when I came in, I said, do you know what six feet looks like? Because y'all were like all gathered up together. And we're going to play a game here in a minute that's going to really emphasize the importance of that those three. And then it's to wash your hands, something that you learned in kindergarten. You know, those the fundamental things in kindergarten you learn. Wait your turn, share, um, wash your hands, close the door in the bathroom when you're in there. And most of all, to just kind of wait and be patient. Because if not, then all things kind of fall all apart. And that's what we're kind of trying to do in public health is keep everything together and keep everybody safe. So I started out in um, open heart transplant pediatrics, and then I went into an ER, and then I went into um, being a combat casualty nurse, and then I taught at the college in the School of Nursing, and then I decided I was on the wrong side of the street. I wanted to help people prevent getting diabetes or prevent getting polio or prevent from getting the flu or prevent having their child go to kindergarten and not realize that they had a learning disability that we could have identified in a well child visit through a, an assessment. So all of those kinds of things, because it's early intervention, early response, you have a better health outcome. So that's what we do in public health. We keep the well, well. Oh, I like that. It's really cool. Um, it's like preventative medicine. Yes, it is. Is. And that's actually one of the things that you want to go to school for, close yeah. enough. I, I'm doing pre-med, hopefully. So. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's a cool. I just took where to go down. Um, so you want to know what I brought in my bag from the health department? Well, I was going to say, um, so a good intro, um, because I know you have some goodies. You talked about the goodies that yeah. was coming. I did. <laughs> um, Due to COVID, what we're currently experiencing is we've had to adjust yeah. our normal meeting schedules, where normally we would end up having uh, more of our committee members mm -hmm. and more of our board present. But due to COVID and still kind of having somewhat of a normalcy there, mm -hmm. we have created candid conversations. They're my favorite. You learn the most that way. <laughs> And you are guest number three. Okay. And one of the things that our youth have asked about is we know that we've been in COVID now almost nine months. Yeah. It's like a baby. Just it get is. it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. <laughs> and being able to truly understand it, but not so much from things that we can't do anymore. Right. But how do we evolve? How do we continue to go forth from a physical and a mental standpoint mm -hmm. while also still being safe? Exactly. So, and I know that game is coming. No, that game is coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have two games I like to play. One is about STDs and family planning, and the other one is about COVID. And they're both very impactful because mm -hmm. it's a live demonstration of how things spread. Okay. So, y'all ready? Yeah. Sure. Okay, so we're all familiar with the game Twister, right? <laughs> but, you know, we can't, like, put the mat on the floor, and we can't um, get really close to each other, and we, we can't get all wrapped up in it, right? But we can all put on a dot, 
Everybody in the room can put on a dot and we can spin the wheel and we can find out just where COVID lurks. Oh, y'all get to put on a dot too. Oh, yeah, get dots too. And I get a dot too. <laughs> so, I mean, if we're going to do it, I will all get dots. Because the interesting thing about COVID is this I might look fine, I might feel fine, I might act fine. Because you know I am fine, right? There you go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, but I might not be. I might be one of those, what they call an asymptomatic carrier or an asymptomatic person, and I may not realize that I actually have COVID. So the reason why we wear masks is not so that I don't get COVID. It's so I don't give you COVID or you or you or you. And that's part of the prevention and the health component of what we do at the health department. We help you understand that six feet is six feet. You know, it's like the broom handle in that movie where they were, and she said, no, I'm just going to go five feet. No, it really is actually six feet. And what a close contact means and what it means to wash your hands. You know, it's not the splish, splash, grab a paper towel and out the door you go. So what we're going to do is every has a color, right? We, some of us are the same. Some of us are different. So I'm going to spin the wheel. I can, like, do it. Okay. So the color is... Okay, pick between green and red. Green. Green, okay. <laughs> he gets to pick green because he has red. Okay, so um, who has a green one? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You just tested positive for COVID. You went to one of our testing sites in our county, and you got tested. And you popped positive for COVID. And you weren't even sick. You didn't even feel sick. You were like, I was just going to get my knee surgery and what do you mean I have COVID? I'm not sick. No, you need to retest me because I'm going in for knee surgery. Because if you're going in for surgeries or having a baby or anything like that, they're going to test you for COVID because they don't want you to bring it in not knowing that you have it. So you went for your knee surgery pre-op. They tested you and you popped positive for COVID. And we were all in this meeting with you last week. So what's going to happen is, is you're going to say, well, when the Onslow County Health Department calls you and says, Ms. Waters, you've tasted positive for COVID. We're going to ask you all these questions about how do you feel? Have you had any of these symptoms? Is there anything new? I mean, you may not have realized you lost your taste until somebody said, well, have you lost your taste? Have you lost your sense of smell? And you go, well, you know, now that you mentioned it, but you never ran a fever. You never ran any of those other things. So you didn't really think about it. And you had this, this gathering of us, but how we all started out, you know, you know, so I was sitting all the way over here and y'all were, you know, kind of gathered up together because it's this funny thing about young people. Young people think they're invincible, invisible, and bulletproof. Well, this is none of those things. Our average mean age now for our COVID positives is 36 years of age. Yeah. So you're going to have them younger and you're going to have them older to get that mean age, right? It really impacts the survivability of an older person. But what the young people don't realize is it can truly impact the longevity of your life and how well your lungs will support you through the rest of your life. Because you've seen some of the ones where people have had to have lung transplants. They now have lung diagnoses that they didn't have before. So we're going to ask you, so who are you in that meeting with? And who were you around for the last 14 days? Mm -hmm. So you had a little sleepover at your house with your friends. And you had this meeting. So we have to have all the names of all your friends at your sleepover. And everyone here. So just because we're here with you and you're positive does not mean we're positive. But what it does mean is we are close contacts to a positive because we will be in this room longer than 15 minutes. And everybody, what's so funny is, is everybody almost is wearing their mask correctly. So, but we weren't in the beginning, right? Some of us had it where their nose sticking out. Some of us had it where it was like, I mean, when I was in here by myself, I had mine slung off and I was like, had it hanging on this ear where I wear it all day long in my office. You let somebody walk into my office, but let's say I had coughed on, on the table here and she touched the table and then touched her face to adjust her mask. See why it's so important to wash our hands. These are just 10 germ carrying vectors. That's all they are. We call them fingers, but you know, we know we spread everything this way. So we're going to ask you about your close contacts and then we're going to reach out to every single one of them, not telling them your name. And we're going to say, we, we just wanted to call you and let you know you have been 
identify it as a close contact to a positive, and we need for you to quarantine for 14 days. So then you have to call your job, and you have to tell them that you're positive for COVID. Well, you just have to tell them that you've been quarantined. You don't have to tell them that you're positive for COVID. But the right thing to do is to tell them that you're positive. And here's the reason why. How many people come and go from you in your workplace? Did you have your mask on? Did you stay six feet apart? Had you washed your hands? Did you cough on your desk? Just be honest and truthful because that's the only way we're actually going to stop this until we get a vaccination. And, there, and the vaccines are coming. We already know it. It's all over the news, right? So while you're quarantined, you're quarantined with your family. It doesn't necessarily mean that your family has to quarantine if you're a contact to a positive. But if you're a positive, your family has to quarantine too. So that's those, that complicated component of it. For like a girl like me, I'm a hugger, man. I'm a hugger. I got married in the middle of COVID. Do you think I got to hug anybody when I got married? Nobody. Well, I got to hug my fiance, who became my husband by the end of the day. But you know what I'm saying? And I like to entertain and have parties at my house. I like to have get-togethers. Youths, I'm just young at heart, I suspect, because I'm old, but... I'm young at heart and I like to socialize. I'm highly sociable. I have a puppy I'm trying to highly socialize. Do you think I can take my puppy and go over to my friend's houses and entertain, you know, hey, you want to play with my puppy? I can't because I see children every day. So I'm up in the Kool-Aid of people, little people's faces like this. And I'm there for, I'm with them longer than 15 minutes in an hour visit, right? So I wear this mask to protect you from me. You wear your mask to protect you me from you. And if we all do it, trust me, I don't like to wear this mask any more than anybody else. There's a reason why I'm not an OR nurse. I don't, it's just not my thing. I like to see people's faces, like see their smiles, like see their energy. But what's also happening in this, because you have COVID, you don't get to hang with any of these people. And they may start feeling differently about you. If you call them and say, hey girl, I got the COVID. I mean, COVID's just a mean girl. I'm just telling you because I don't like her. She has ruined many a party, many a graduation, many a photo op, all those kinds of things. But one thing she has taught us is we do love each other. We love each other a lot because you know what? We'll bake something and we'll take it and sit it on our neighbor's porch who we know is sick. We will go to the grocery store for somebody that we know has is, is lost their job and they don't have enough money to buy groceries and they got small children or they have adult children that live at home or they take care of their adult parents. All of a sudden, the, the breadwinner of the home is, is no longer winning the bread. There are so many things that have happened positive out of this. We've learned that we don't really need as much as we thought we did because we don't have what we had. You never thought that toilet paper would be so exciting, right? <laughs> they have toilet paper in the Walmart. Yeah, they have toilet paper at Lowe's Food. I mean, it's crazy what we now put into perspective. But if you're a person that um, gets sad by being alone or you're a person that gets feels adrift if you don't have your church home to go to. I mean, I know I have friends of mine that, I mean, I miss going to church and fellowshipping with my fellow Christians. I miss having dinner parties at my home with my friends and family. I miss doing some of those things that I can't do. And I know that it has impacted me as a person, and I'm one of those perpendicular full of joy people. So for those people that are not, we need to check in on each other. And it's okay to say, you know, I'm just having a day where I don't like COVID. Like all week, you know, or all month or since March or, I mean, you know, it's okay to not be okay. It's not okay not to say you're okay and just keep going. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. And then all of a sudden you have a meltdown. So I think that the emotional impact on teenagers is, is greater than people realize because you're one of two kinds of um, teenagers. You're one of those ones that's all up in it, and then you're one that sits back and watches everybody that's all in it. So you don't have your t entertainment if you're, not, if you're one of those people that sort of sits and watches and then engages when you feel like you're in your comfort zone with that group. And if you're one of those people that's all in it and you don't get, you know, it's all, it's all in, then you don't have your all in. And, you, and you're, you feel like there's this void and this great gulf in your life that's missing. And fortunately, y'all have technology that we didn't have before. I mean, imagine if we had this pandemic. I'm, I'll be 56 in a couple of weeks. Never have I seen a world pandemic. I did see H1N1. It was like, you know, 
In, in, in comparison to this, is a little bitty flu bug. I mean, it made a lot of people sick, but it was a little bitty flu bug. And we had a vaccine like that. I mean, we did mass vaccinations and everybody was covered. This is very different. And it's something that has, it will affect this generation for years to come. And to know that and to be aware of that, because it's going to affect you academically, it's going to affect you socially. I mean, kids that are going to kindergarten, think about the kindergarten experience the way it was last year. Hey, you know, everybody sat there, you sit at the orange table, you sit at the green table, and now they're at the green computer and the orange computer, and then they're at their house with their mother and their dad, who are not educators for reasons. So, I mean, there are so many complex layers that COVID has created that it's going to be like an onion for many years that we peel back. And actually having some personal awareness, but also if you notice that your friend is 10 pounds lighter than he or she was before COVID started, unintentionally, or your girlfriend or guy friend is 15 pounds heavier than before COVID, sometimes we eat or sometimes we don't eat. And if you see somebody that doesn't, act, they're not acting quite like they normally do, like they're hanging out with a different group of people or they're not hanging out at all and their behaviors are changing, check in with them because they need you. And sometimes you just need the truth and love from a friend. And whether it's FaceTime or it's, you know, you know that old fashioned thing, you know, it's paper and pen. It's foreign to most people. But, you know, just sometimes <laughs> writing a note, popping it in the mail, sometimes, you know, you, it, it, now it'll travel all the way to Kinston and then down around to Fayetteville and then it'll come back to Jacksonville and you mail it to go right across the street. I mean, hey, it's a traveling letter, right? Just some of those things that if you would like to get it, then give it. If that makes sense, if you'd like to get a phone call, then give one. Reach out to somebody and call somebody you hadn't talked to in a while or you hadn't seen. Academia is rapidly declining. I mean, I have friends that are teachers and they're struggling to get students to come to come to class. Oh, you know what? They don't care if you're in your pajamas. They don't. <laughs> they just care that you're there and that you're turning in your assignments. And most, most school teachers went to be school teachers because they like that eight to five kind of thing. You know, that it's really like 6.30 to 5.30. But now it's like this 24-hour clock. She's got kids texting her in the middle of the night. No child should be up in the middle of the night. Sorry, your circadian rhythm doesn't work that way. So, I mean, back away from the gaming, move forward towards your library card. You know, you can actually do library online and stuff. It's kind of great. I got my library card today. It was so exciting. Yes, Virginia March at the, um, at the library. She hooked me up today. So she got my <laughs> library card. So now I can do things online through the library and you can check out books. But you can also check out some of your academic books. So, I mean, there's so many good things that have come from COVID and some things that are maybe not so good. But being in quarantine and being isolated is one of those things. Some people really like it because they like being in by themselves. And, you know, they like just to drive up to the grocery store and hit the button and the back of the vehicle pops open and they put the groceries in and they say, hey, thanks, you know, and drive away. But most of us, we like to sip and shop at Lowe's Food. Hey! You know, you go through and, and you're having all that social interaction. It was date night for my husband, B and I. And, and we ran into all these people that we knew. And it was like our social touch for the week. And we did our meal planning and all that kind of stuff. And he has diabetes, so we can't do that. I mean, I literally go to work, I come home, that's it. I mean, if you notice, I'm standing all the way back here away from all y'all. Because <laughs> no offense, I don't know y'all. I don't know your family, don't know where you've been all day. I know where I've been all day and I don't want to share anything that I've been with today. So that's kind of how you, you not kind of need to think about your bubble. Your bubble isn't just here. It's a bubble six feet that way, six feet that way, six feet that way. So, and that's challenging because we're kind of, we like to all be all like next to each other and stuff, you know, bumping and giggling and stuff. And that's how we are, we cultivate friendships and relationships and inside jokes and, you know, we whisper stories and we share things and our sharing is become like on the team's meeting in front of everybody. And that's not, you know, we don't want to do that here. And you're like, oh my God, that guy's wearing his underwear and a suit jacket. You know, we were talking about that before we started. And it was like, all of a sudden he was publicly humiliated for something everybody else does. And thank goodness he had kind of a sense of humor about it. But if he didn't, that could have truly affected him as a person that, you know, that he was humiliated and embarrassed on national television. And, you know, because he didn't have pants on. I mean, he had 
I know we're on Fox or I know we're on, but, it, but you see where I'm saying? How it can impact somebody. If, you know, you say, I don't like to get dressed and get ready. Most people don't. Not everybody. I'm a morning person, man. Eight o'clock at night, I'm like, what? What do you want? But eight o'clock in the morning, I'm like, hey, how you like those eggs? You want some toast with that? You like jelly? We have homemade jelly, you know? You want, or you want the store-bought kind? We have some store-bought kind. And you're like, oh my God, make it stop. <laughs> but at eight o'clock, I'm like, oh, all my words are gone. So do you see any questions? Oh, you gotta have at least one question. I've got nothing. You got nothing? I gave out that much information? I empowered you and lifted you. So. Well, what do you do? Like, people are still having parties. And yes. It is so over. frustrating. <laughs> because you know what happens after they have a party? I, and I, I shared, as I came in, we got married on May 29th in the middle of COVID. The, the um, governor had lifted the restrictions on houses of worship that you had to have so, you, if you had this many number of people, you have this many number of people on the inside. Well, our church seats like nine hundred people. So all the people that were not in a, an endangered age group, not with a comorbidity you know, that could come, you know, there was a list of things. If you have any of the following things, you may not come. We'll see you at the reception in a year. But we had like 80 people and they were all spread out. Do you know my husband and I, we just like, I said, we're going to mark it on the calendar like this. And we're just going to pray nobody calls us and tells us that they were an asymptomatic COVID. They went to go get their knee surgery and learn that they had COVID. Because that's how a lot of people are learning it. Most people are not dragging through the grocery store like this with perspiration sweating off of them for the fever that they're running and they just feel terrible. That's not it. It's that person that, you know, just feels a little, you know, just feel, you know, it's a little warm. something today. What? It's like, it's a little warm. Yes, it's sort of like that because it's a low grade fever. It's 100.4 for adults, which for an adult, that's a fever. But I mean, you're thinking, oh, okay, at my age, I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> I mean, it's gotta be a hot flash, right? I mean, there's so many things because you know what we want? We don't want it. So we're gonna justify everything around it. And most of us, in my house, it was walking, talking, breathing, you're going to school because I was a nurse. Walking, talking, breathing, I'm going to school. I got a little cough, I got a little sore throat. I'm still going to work because I don't wanna leave my staff short. I don't want them to have to call my patients and say, oh, well, our nurse called out today. She can't see y'all's kids today, blah, blah, blah. So I think a lot of times we make um, reasons. They're reasons that they are really excuses. But the, we call them reasons. And, and to justify something in your head, it may actually be an excuse. But we don't want it. And we don't want to be it, have it. So I think sometimes that's where we end up with it. Because we all get together, because we want to get all together, because we want to, we want to have these events and parties. And we did get married, and we did it when we had hand sanitizer. I mean, we did everything. You know, you got to have, have a mask, you got to have this. You, everybody's got to sit. Now, if you have, if you've worked with a group of people and you were a pod, because many companies broke down their their staff and they said, this is Group A, Group B, Group C, Group A and Group B. You all work these days. Group C, you work this these groups of days, and no A's and B's and C's can mingle because we can't lose what they call mission readiness mm -hmm. so that's important and there's there's plans for that they're called coop plans in the world of like what we do so if everybody kind of abides by that but i think since it's been since march that we've really been talking about it and i think you know it's like when your mom says clean your room or your dad goes could you take out the trash and you hear it all the time you know what you start hearing and I think that that's what's happening and that's kind of why our numbers are rising because people are fed up and worse they feel like it is their their right as an American to take off a mask and go wherever they want to go and actually it is but in the public health world it's not so I mean for me I would rather protect those people around me because I'm supposed to love my neighbors and to take care of them and love myself less. This is, I, I don't like this. I'll be the first one to say it, but I will do this to protect everyone I come in contact with. Because to me, this is a minor inconvenience than if I was to put somebody on a vent or worse, rob somebody of their loved one mm -hmm. because that person was at a vulnerable age or had a comorbidity that caused them to, to um, lose their life to COVID. 
And I, I couldn't. That's why we said, if you're in this age group, you don't get to come to our wedding because we, we, couldn't, we couldn't run that risk. So I think those three W's, they sound pretty easy, right? But it seems awfully hard for some people to include us because when we came in the room, were we six feet apart? We got six feet apart because we were like, oh, hey, wait a minute. We're not, you know, we were all relocating ourselves and putting it into perspective. And we all like donned our masks because exactly how they should be worn. I know. I, I, I keep sliding. Can I just tell you this? I know I had mine on straight because I, I actually have to wear mine like this all day long. So I have like the stack of them like this on my desk and I would take them home and wash them every day. Because you know what? If you wear that mask every day and you never wash it, you know what you're doing? Putting the germs on you. Anyway. Yes! You just take the germs. There you go. All day, every day kind of thing. That's why nurses don't wear caps anymore because we kept putting germs and we were taking the germs from room to room to room. Yeah. Didn't ever wear one. I never owned one. I graduated just as the CDC was saying, oh, those are, mm -mm. I mean, how many people wash their caps and nobody went? <laughs> so they said, don't wear them anymore. <laughs> but these we need to wear. We need to wear them. We need to wait six feet apart. Remember how I said, do you know what six feet looks like? That is six feet. So when you're standing like this close, it's on six feet. So you notice I turn my back to him, so I'm going to breathe. So when you think about that, and then you have to wash your hands a lot. And I'm a soap and water girl. And when you wash your hands, you use warm water. You use soap. And I want you to think about this. You know, every day is not your birthday. But every day, you can actually sing the birthday song to yourself. And it can be your birthday, your little birthday moment. Because if you sing happy birthday, like you would want somebody to sing it to you. Oh, there's the mural. Look, there it is. That's the one in our building. Isn't it cool? It talks about the six feet. It says, wear your mask and wash your hands. I love that. Somebody at the Council of Arts did that for us, and it's actually a mural that's in our building right now. So, you know, you can't really stop by and see it, but you can stop by and look in the windows at it. But it's totally great. But, I mean, think about it. it it's really easy because you see that picture right there? Those folks aren't standing six feet apart, right? Mm -hmm. So it's weight six feet apart, and we know what that now looks like. Wear your mask, and only if you're two, two years and under do you not have to wear a mask because children can suffocate wearing a mask if they're a little like that because of the way they're, they're the way they breathe the mechanism which they breathe and then wash your hands so we were just talking about washing hands so when you wash your hands pull your sleeves up put your fingertips down because they're the dirtiest parts because what do we do we touch this and we touch this and we touch this and we don't really usually touch things with our, our palms right but what do we wash <laughs> Right? <laughs> Ooh, we're in there just describing our palms, and it's like, but these are the parts down here, the, the dirtiest. So push your sleeves up, put your fingertips down, get your soap. Uh, we have the really kind of cool dispensing ones. You wave your hand under, you, and you wave, and you wave, and then it goes, pops a little bit out there for you. And then you're like this with the water. So soap in one hand, water in the other hand, and put them together. And then start lacing your fingers, rub the back sides of your hands, rub the, and rub up around your wrist like this. And then keep your fingertips down as you're rinsing them off. Because if you're doing them like this, you know what happens? Runs up this way. Then you put your hand down and the dirty water runs back down your hand. And then you just dry it and smear it around, right? So you sort of defeated the purpose. And for goodness sakes, do not grab that doorknob on your way out. <laughs> right. Because guess who grabbed it on the way in? Dirty your dirty hands. hands. So all you did was just recycle, reuse, repurpose. We don't want to do that. So just, I mean, we actually have positioned our trash cans like right by our doors. Uh, coming out of the restroom and places like that. And we have, you know, the foam in kind of stuff. You can foam into our rooms and we want to see patients and stuff. But good old-fashioned water is really the best. And, and make sure that you, I know this sounds crazy, practice good hygiene because if you are physically clean, your teeth are flossed and brushed, your hair is clean, and your body and your clothes are clean, then you start out with a clean surface. First of all, you just probably feel a little bit better, but you have a clean surface. And I know there are days that you just want to stay in your jeans all day, but that doesn't mean you have to stay in your funky teeth from the night before. Wash your teeth, you know, wash your face, wash your hands, the start of the day. Because I know that y'all go to school either Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday, and Wednesday. I know everybody home. So, you know, you, oh, you go four, you go more than that? Oh, you, that's right, you're homeschooled. That's right. So, oh, yeah, but you only go for four hours every day. Uh, really? Not even that long? I'm doing school all day. Really? Yeah. Oh. I hear from homeschoolers that, you know, there's no offense, there's not the distraction of the other children in the room. <laughs> and so mom or whoever is doing it is like, you got this assignment, that assignment. And it usually takes less time. So so how is it affecting you as a homeschooler? Because it's kind of the same but different for you, right? 
Yeah, it's it's. I'm a social person, and I don't yeah. I don't like being at home at all. Yeah, it sucks. It does. <laughs> it really that is does. the best I, way I, I can say I it. Like it really sucks. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, yeah. that's that's the worst part about it. I mean, I have better grades and stuff, but I just I don't like being at home twenty four seven doing school. Yeah, I would rather do the two days on it, two days off thing. Okay, but and and how is it for you? I go Thursday Friday. Okay. But yeah. I'm also a social person. I like to hug people and like yeah. talk to people. Gotcha. But I I can't do that in school. Yeah, oh no, you can't even do it at home unless it's your like family, and then you don't like your brothers and sisters anyway. So yeah. And well, <laughs> I've actually been homeschooled my whole life, so really? okay. it was pretty easy to. Just well, no, but I mean, the th but think about that. The transition for her is different, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, we're all different. We're all unique, and we're all being impacted in right. differently about it. So she could be probably a support system for other people that are having a hard time adjusting it. Cause this is, this is all she knows. Imagine if she had been forwarded into a, an academic environment where she had to go into a schoolhouse every day. She'd be like, Oh my gosh. So you, you see how it'd be very different for her. Yeah. Welcome to homeschooling everybody. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. And her parents probably like being homeschoolers. Yours may not. So yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay. So, and for you, um, I, it's definitely a different transition because I go to the early college. Mm -hmm. So we're taking college classes online, and some of them are like difficult. So it's hard to kind of mm -hmm. keep up with that as well. But I think part of it too is like it's our senior year, and we don't get to do anything here. Right. It's a COVID. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, in the famous words of your peer over here, sucks. Yeah. <laughs> because it does. I mean, that's one of those things that's sort of your launching pad. My kids made mistakes in high school that they didn't travel into college with because they were allowed to do some of the things that you're not going to be allowed to do just socially. Because for us social butterflies, it's pretty easy, but there are some socially awkward people in the world. And high school is kind of their training ground before they go to college. So they don't go to college being completely socially inept. And I think this is going to be a struggle for people. Maybe that's why when you said, oh, my gosh, did you see it? Why are all these people having all these parties and get-togethers? Maybe because they were in this environment at home, and then all of a sudden they went to college, and they were like, woo we can do what we want to. And all of a sudden, now we've got this, these huge outbreaks. And then they said, okay, well, fine, we have to send everybody home. Right. Because you youngins just don't know how to act and follow the rules. And now we have, now look what's happened to us. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, the broken lamp. It doesn't, it, the lamp doesn't get put back together. We have to have a new lamp. So I think that that's a, that's a great way of saying that there are some components of your adolescent childhood. I mean, I, girl, I still remember my prom. And I'm old. I mean, I graduated in 1982, decades before you were ever born. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I mean, I remember my prom. I remember things and activities that I did in high school that I mourn for y'all not to have. Because they're significant, and they are some milestones in adolescent development behavior that I see in my line of work that are being directly impacted by social isolation, which is what we're having right now in, in pods. So, because, you know, your girlfriend, she's in the, in the Tuesday, Thursday class if you're in the, you know, the Monday, Tuesday class. Do you know what I mean? So, the Wednesday, the Wednesday's the only day that we really worry because... That's when everybody's out of school and they can do something crazy like have a party at the house. Oh, hey, come over on Tuesday night. We have a sleepover Wednesday. We'll go class together. And then Thursday, you fall back to school. And it's like, no, that's all reason why we broke everybody up was to kind of keep a level of separation. And we know that, you know, it's, yeah. adolescents don't know how to separate. I just have to tell you that. Y'all are, you know, socially driven <laughs> because that's where your, you know, hormones are all right now. So. Well, as I say, you just made a great point. Since it is hard for adolescents, sometimes it's even hard for adults. <laughs> well, yes, it is. So we understand. Yeah. But what do y'all currently do now to kind of be cognizant, rule follower, in the midst of others that are not following rules? So what do you kind of put in place? Um, I think definitely just, I mean, people are very uh, adamant on social media about, like, wearing your masks, and they'll call people out who are going to parties and stuff, so, I mean, it's, there's some teens are very, we're staying home, we're not doing this, it's 
split, just like with adults, you know. Um, but I think just it's important to tell your friends to stay home, you stay home. And like you were saying, mm -hmm. maybe get a pen pal or do a Zoom call or something. Because, I mean, it's not going to work unless people stay home. Mm -hmm. Until we get a vaccine. And then people have to be willing to get the vaccine. Right. Well, you got to trust it, you know? Yeah. I, I, and, and, you know, and that's that thing. I, I completely accept the head no. But I'll tell you what, I'll be the first one to get the poke if I can take that off. I mean, how long do you think that's going to take? Because some people are like, this is going to be a 10-year adventure with COVID or something. Oh, I sure hope like... not. I, 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 I feel by what the professionals are saying on television and the leadership is saying on television that they have, I mean, it's it's not unknown that there are, there are immunization trials going on and they have to be safe before they can give them to us. And I know that people go, well, they're going to rush it to the market. I don't know how many years people think that immunizations are studied, um, especially in a crisis situation where our economy is being impacted, people's health is being impacted. People aren't going to the doctor for wellness visits because they're afraid if they go there, they'll come home with COVID. So, I mean, some of those, like I said, you know, public health is about keeping the well well. We don't see sick people at the health department in theory. So when you come for your well visit, everyone should have one every year. I see kids from zero to 20 years of age. So if you hadn't had a well visit in this in the last year, I'll see you at the health department. And then we can learn about your height, your weight, your blood pressure, your vision, your hearing, those kinds of things, how you're coping. Because those are all important components of what's going on. But there are a lot of people that aren't even going. And for me, if there's a vaccine that I can give to somebody that I've gotten myself, I will be a person that takes the vaccine because I'm not going to give somebody a vaccine and go, oh, yeah, and not have had it myself. And, and my husband, because he's a diabetic, because we are social people. We want to, we want to move forward through this. And we have to, at some point in time, have some trust, not blind trust, but have some trust in the fact that there are scientists all over the world collaborating and working cohesively to create a vaccine that is safe. And, and there's different ones that are being tested. And the minute somebody has a hiccup, the whole thing stops. And I want you to realize that when some one person has a hiccup, everything stops. But that one person may have had some underlying something that nobody knew about, and they researched that person to see if it's the vaccine or if it's the person's overall health and wellness. Is it something genetic that was undiagnosed? Is it something that you know he had or she had before that they didn't uh, like say they had? You know that they, they kept that secret to themselves. There's a lot that goes into vaccination research. And I know that there's all kinds of things that said vaccines cause autism. They have proven documented that it has not. And the man that said it did, he lied and he said he lied before he took his life. But there were a lot of people that their children got illnesses and lost their hearing and their sight and things like that because they believe what they read on the internet. Sometimes the internet is a great place to go. DSWs on the internet, you can buy shoes there. It's awesome. But I don't think I would go to Wikipedia to find out about the latest COVID vaccine. Do you know what I mean? I would go to a .gov, a .org, um, not a .com because they're trying to con you out of your money. Just sort of look at it like that. A .edu, those are evidence and authoritative-based sources that you can look for. And yeah, everybody's going to say, well, they're doing it to sell a vaccine. Well, yeah. I mean, they have to recoup their money somewhere. But they're also creating a level of freedom for the United States of America that we have grown very accustomed to that we do not like living without. So that's, a, that's that possibility on the horizon that could change all of that. And I love the fact that y'all are um, advocates for wearing masks and y'all, y'all, um, I don't want to say self-police because that may, that may not be a good term to use these days, but y'all, y'all have self-accountability. If this is what's going to keep us all safe, why would you want to not keep us all safe? But I have a word for that. It's so selfish. But um, so, I, I, you know what I mean? Or a lack of respect or lack of regard for other people. If we know that wearing this protects you from me, then why would I not want to do that? But they have that right. And you have the right not to associate with them. What other thoughts do y'all have? around COVID, around health, around, from a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint? 
what have you done creatively with Zoom? Because I know some of y'all are probably Zoomed out, right? <laughs> I don't be Zoom. No. <laughs> Shall we spin the wheel again? <laughs> Like, I've used Zoom maybe a few times, but that was for, like, college standpoints to, like, okay. talk to NC State and Campbell. That's right. Like, colleges like that. It's not Zoom out. It's Teams out. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm teams out. Teams I'm tired of Teams, too. So, but what has been kind of something fun that be like, okay, today was a good day on Teams? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me eat in class. You say teacher what? My teacher let me eat in class. Eat in class? Okay. Don't think you don't get it at actual school. Yeah. You know, you eat while you're doing class. Okay. So oh, you teacher. don't even think about that because y'all are at home, right? Yeah. Oh, how hilarious. I never even like thought about that. I would say that's true. So if the teacher allows you to eat during class, then that's a good day. Yeah. Okay. So there are some that say, no, you can't eat. Yeah. There's some teachers that will make you turn your camera on and you have to be like actually there and you have to be there's some teachers that'll make you actually get dressed mm -hmm. like My teachers don't let me have my camera on like one of my teachers I, I switched out of the class because I didn't need the, the credit for that class anymore But they were saying that you needed to have your camera on dressed and At a good place where there's nothing around you and you have to like not you can't eat anything You have to actually be focused with school the whole time and it was, I mean, everyone was there, but it just wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like the classes that I have now, kind of just log on, listen to what the teacher says, eat food, and then log off, and then eat more food. <laughs> <laughs> I have this question, for the class that you can kind of just show up and hang, do you feel more engaged and learn more that way, or do you just feel like you've shown up? And well, that teacher should be happy that you're there. That's There's no wrong emotions, answer. That's right just a, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. mixed emotions right there. Yeah. You said mixed emotions? Yeah. Yeah. Because some classes, I just really, some classes, it's teachers small. just like get, get too over, overwhelmed and then just start talking for an hour straight. Don't even let us like pay attention and just stop, start, start talking, not stop. And I kind of just, zone out in those classes because i'm like what are you saying and then i get confused and then i get lost and then they don't yeah that's the only part i don't like about it is they just keep going and then if you're lost you're lost if you are there with the class you're there with the class type of thing how do you raise your hand there's a button there's a raise yeah. hand button oh so the, you can't be like in your camera going you know, so there's a button and it shakes a hand for you. Yeah. To let the teacher know you have a question. Oh, so how does the teacher know you're shaking your hand? They it'll, it'll all pop, yeah, it'll pop up on the screen. Oh, oh that's kind of cool. <laughs> you can tell I'm not like. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, please don't make me go. Okay, fine. I'll over my surface. Well, now it makes me wonder because in talking with, we have one, two, three seniors and sophomore. Sophomore. So, how is it in preparation for graduation? How is it in like workload? Is it a barrage of everything at once, as if you're regularly in class, or is there any type of relief? I would, for my school at least, I, it's a lot different for our seniors. Um, there's a lot more workload. Choir, we usually don't have work at all. And we're writing at least two essays every week. Mm. And they're talking about us not having a senior prom this year. That makes me sad, personally. Because yeah. I was like, I, I wanted my senior prom. But it, it's just really different. Because online, just your teacher's just talking and talking. Like, we're not collaborative online any, anymore. And when you're in class, and even though we have our mind when you send teacher like a separate message, they don't check their messages half the time. So they're like, well, why didn't you send me a message on mine? I'm like, I did. I, I'm still confused. <laughs> but it's just 
a lot more work just like at home i'm working almost 24 7. i don't have a lot of free time anymore uh-huh. Yeah, that's definitely, it's like a loss of a weekend almost yeah. because every it day is a loss of work and everything. Especially with me now taking online classes at Coastal, it just more work is piled on as well. Yeah. And I have this question. How many of y'all have younger siblings that you now have to homeschool or watch out after because your parent has to go back to work? I have a father if that counts. <laughs> well, yeah, that does. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of see where I'm going because I mean, I yeah. know that there are a lot of like older kids that are now like suddenly the caregiver and the educator for the younger kids so that the parent could go back to work. And that increases a stress level on y'all mm -hmm. that was not there previously. Yeah, it's definitely um, kind of the same area. Like, I'm taking organic chemistry this semester, so it's already a hard class. Yes. And then it's wow. extra work class. class. So it's just, it's just struggle, and then you're trying to do college apps, scholarships, like all of the stuff at one time. So seniors definitely. Yeah. This is now with COVID, are they waiving those astronomically no. expensive no. application fees? No. They had free application week, but like the big schools like NC State, UNC, Duke, you still have to pay. They're, They're so mm -hmm. expensive. Mm -hmm. just, oh yeah, oh yeah. I guess thirty and twenty twenty six. So I remember it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, wow. Okay. And they're going to be online for y'all in college, some of your college classes, or are they going to be residential? Don't know yet. We have no idea yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it goes back to do they party week one? Because that's what ended up And then they sit down and But I mean, think about it. Okay, if, if, think about it like this. What a great point. Let's say that they had open classes and they hadn't had the COVID positive frat house that knew they were positive that were quarantined and they said, well, we'll just stay home. We'll have everybody here. It sort of missed the point, <laughs> but they infected a whole lot of people and then they closed down that campus. So that is a great point. What happens if everyone would have gone to school and practiced wait, wear, wash? This thing be over. Do you, do you, do you think that it would have been, you would have still been sitting in class? Mm -hmm. it may, it's not going to have been over, but do you think that you would have still had the now the word luxury, the luxury of sitting in a classroom, having your academic teacher live in front of you where you can actually physically raise your hand and participate and collaborate in a group of people. Do you think that that's possible? Do you think people learned from those mistakes? Well, I would say yes, but it's, I would also is it the no. right people that learn? Because right. it's like the people that are already following the precautions, they're just even more like, oh, we need to be extra careful. Mm -hmm. But there are people who still don't care. Like, they're going to go places without their mask on. They're still going to have their parties. So I don't really know yeah. how much you can change someone who doesn't want to change. Okay. Like me personally, I wear my mask just because my dad had major back surgery and I don't need to bring that home to him for him to be coughing all day. Oh, no. But when I go to school, we're, even though we're required to wear a mask, they take it off as soon as they get into the school. And like... You look at them, like, they get yelled at by teachers all day to wear ma their mask, and they won't put it on. So some people learn, some people don't. Just they People just don't care anymore, I guess. Well, That's how I would say it. I think part of that, too, is it's not enforced as much. Because even, like, you go into maybe, I don't know, a grocery store or something, and people are in there without their masks on. everywhere. Yeah, so it's like, no one's telling them you have to let, wear it. They wouldn't let me go into the academy without a mask. Really? They wouldn't. They wouldn't let me through the door. But some places are, they don't yeah, care. Some places enforce it. Some don't. Like food line, they don't enforce it. Really? No, they don't enforce it at all at our food line. It's just requested. <laughs> it's requested. It's requested. It says required on the door, but they they don't care. It's really okay. just requested. I mean, they look signs up, but people no, just come in. Yeah. Do you so. think they really don't care, or do you think that they are in a place where they're exhausted from the pers that per that person? that just barrages them with and berates them with all of this blah, 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 oh. instead of just putting the mask on, going to buy their milk and moving the store. Okay. I think it goes back to the, our right mm -hmm. exactly. not to wear. Mm -hmm. However, it's the consequences of our right as well mm -hmm. that, you know, most people are like, either way it goes, mm -hmm. I'm still not gonna do it or I am gonna do it. So that's where, those of us that are able to be able to be that voice and say, 
wear your mask or, you know, I played a game of Twister. <laughs> Right. And, <laughs> and everybody in the room got quarantined and, because they were in contact. And I mean, but it, you know, it's a funny thing, it's, but it's a great example, right? Because all I did was spin it. And that's basically what people do. They, right. they roll the dice or they spin the twister arrow and where it lands, it lands. Because it's not, it's like cancer. I mean, cancer doesn't care who it, who it gets. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID is the same way. COVID doesn't care who it gets. And when the little people started getting it, then they were like, oh, hello. Because it made, because then I, how long I giggled and joked and said they're probably the ones that are carrying it around, sharing it with everybody, because kids are like that. But it, that's not the case at all, and I say that jokingly, but um, it, it's one of those things that, like like y'all all said, when I said vaccine, two of you went, and two of you went, you know? That's that choice for what guidelines and guidance will be put out, because somebody can say, oh, I got the vaccine, and I don't have to wear my mask, but did they? Right. So, I mean, and, and, you know, there's great controversy that you have to carry a card. and it's going to identify you. There's a chip in it. There's like, well, then there's not. I'm just going to tell you there, there's not. If you don't want to be followed or know where you are, don't take that phone with you. Don't take that iPad with you. Don't get in your car. Because everything, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if you're worried about Big Brother, don't be sitting in this meeting. Big Brother's already got you. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I think that there's just more, a, a cheaper, more effective way to monitor people's behavior and that COVID vaccine is not it. I think it's truly the, the crux behind it is to open our economy, to open up the doors to our true freedoms where we can have parties and interact, but not feel like we're there getting something. I mean, am I getting the COVID here? I mean, you know, it's that's that I think that that's starting to really truly affect us because we are truly exhausted from COVID. Well, truly, even after like if we had a vaccine, would they ever go back to that like normal before? I can't even say normal. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, and I can't tell you what the new normal is going to look like because right now we're still stuck in that place. And the the best thing that you can do truly is get a flu shot. Because what a lot of people don't know is this COVID has been around for a long time. The reason why this was called COVID-19 is because it is a novel virus. It's new. So we've not ever seen this one before. And most of the time they don't replicate quite like this. And they usually don't replicate quite like this so fiercely so fast. Yes. So, you know, there's great controversy about where it came from, how it came into the world, all those other kind of things. At the end of the day, I don't care. I just know it's impacting um, young and old alike. And it has created um, an environment where um, people that didn't used to drink are drinking, people that didn't used to do drugs are doing drugs, people that weren't overweight are, are now, people that weren't too thin are now, people that are now scared to go out of their homes that weren't before. And that's what I worry about. I worry about the unification of our country over finding a vaccine and people feeling that it's safe enough to take so that we can go back to the, our newest normal. Right. Um, I used to be a combat casualty nurse, and I used to tell the wounded and their families that um, the, you had to find your new normal. And I think that's what's going to happen to every single person in the United States. We're going to find a new normal because my husband works from home at, in the barn because he can't go to work because he has diabetes. He works very hard. As a matter of fact, he works harder in that barn, I would venture to say. Like you said, it never stops. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I've got this project. It's, it's like it, you, when you get on the bus and you come home, all your school is stuffed at school. When you go to school or you work from home, it's always there chomping at you. And that creates a level of fatigue that fatigues your mind, it fatigues your body, it fatigues your, your sense of well-being. And it, it actually just sort of preys upon everything that you have just trying to hold it all together. And that's why I say check in with people because your breaking point may not be his or hers or hers or ours. Because, you know, at some point in time, adults are tired because they're not educators. Most of them are not. There's reasons why they're not school teachers and it's not the money. It's the fact that they think at it. Do you know what I mean? So, and if your mom doesn't know how to do chemistry and you're sitting there going, hey, mom, can you help me with my, help me with my organic chemistry? She's like, oh, call Whitney. She, you know, she, she had organic chemistry. She knows how to do it. And I mean, it's that thing that, um, and then all of a sudden parents feel like they're failing their children because they don't have all the answers. And then and they have created this secure place for you to be because home is supposed to be where you feel the safest. And your academic world is supposed to be a certain way. 
and they're not. And there creates great uncertainty for us as adults that we're not protecting the young. And y'all are young. Don't care what you say. Don't care what you think. You're still young. Still living under the parent roof. So they're all paying all your bills. You're young. Hang in there as long as you can. Now, 30, that's a little old, but anyway. But, but you see how I'm saying? I mean, so think about it. It's this whole big circle that's sort of, it can either be like a tornado that's just causing mass destruction everywhere, or, you know, that 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 bugle that you, you know, put on your finger and go, ooh, and then you crunch it. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of ways of looking at it. But there are young, little people that are going to kindergarten, and kindergarten is not like it. It was. And that's how y'all started out. That was your socialization platform where you jumped off. And that there's concerns for me with that too. Child development is one thing we do at the health department. And we want to make sure that, that young people, whether you're zero or you're 20 or you're in our um, family planning as a young adult clinics, we that's one of the things we check on. So how are you doing? How are you doing in the COVID world? How are you feeling? How are you dealing with your stressors? Um, what, what is it that you do to relieve your stress? You, like you asked, what's the fun things that you're doing? Because is the joy gone because there's just too much commotion? Is it? I mean, a little bit. You can't really okay. have as much fun as you could before. Yeah. Okay. Through a screen, it's like, it's yeah. not the same. It's boring. Okay. So how do you fix that? As the, as the youth council, how do you go back to your school and say, you know, we have this conversation and if we realize that there's not a lot of joy in what we do anymore, how do you, how do you present that to the adults that mentor y'all in, in your place of school? Uh, and it's funny you ask that because it made me think of you know, this is an opportunity, and of course, it's a brainstorm to be able to take back and have a recap conversation of hearing the feedback of how much work is piled on on top of and trying to move forward and seeing, like, where is a happy medium at? You know, how can you still accomplish everything that needs to be accomplished? while also still kind of creating a balance, you know? I would be willing but to say there's some teachers that will be in, in on that side of the, hey, let's have some balance. <laughs> because <laughs> right. they're, they're overwhelmed. Right. A lot and of the teachers are too. truly overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Especially teachers that are not like tech savvy. This is probably oh, oh, I, I, I would be a hot mess. Girl, I'd be like, oh, no, the screen went away. <laughs> oh, that's the screen went away. Or do I pull back up, class is over. Yeah, yes, and it's like, oh, and, and the, is, do y'all have good conductivity in your homes to be able to pick up your academia? Because I know in our building, no matter how hard you try, we don't have really good reception. I don't know. We all have like little Wi Fi's everywhere. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Because that's, that's crucial to your success, just academically. Mm -hmm. Now, do y'all have times like, no, no pun intended, y'all like recess in class? I mean, where y'all can all get together and go, you know? That sort of stuff. Maybe in kindergarten. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I mean, that's. I'm asking for so information. Not even a dump period. Like it just. I have a class, then a class, then a class, then a class, yeah, and then I get off that class, class. I eat food, and then I go back to doing schoolwork. It's still like the social. I have, oh, it's like gone. I don't have. Just there for the I have, yeah. We have no break. No time. So break. could a class. suggestion be if you because it's a class and a class and a class. So it. And when your class is over, normally you would like walk from class to class and you have what, seven minutes between each one? Is that the, is that the break time to get yeah, between one class, seven minutes? I mean, imagine if they said, hey, you know, y'all took it back and said, how about if we have like a seven minute blah, blah, blah between each class so that we can all kind of come into these rooms where we would see each other in the hallway um, and we could say hey to each other and stuff where we would not normally be able to because we're not in the classroom itself. And maybe you can take that as a suggestion. And then you don't have class, 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 because that's like death by webinar. Yeah. And, and nobody likes that hallway. Us, us built, uh, our built, you know, the adults are going to death by webinar. But, I mean, because I'm one of those people, if I'm going to go to my supervisor with a concern, I have some ideas that, you know, if, if in a perfect world, I'd love this. But in the realistic world I live in, there's this. And could we come and maybe come between these two places? 
and start with this and work towards this. And a lot of times, if, if they don't, if you don't come, if you come with that possible answer, you may actually get the answer that you seek because they may not have any idea how to fix it and you've given them the idea. And then when they go, well, let me think about it. And then they can present it as your as their own idea. I could care less about that. I just care that we got it moving. Mm -hmm. right. And that may be something y'all can do. And that might be a good idea. Will you think about that? I'm okay with it. I get to see people now. <laughs> Well, Whitney. Girl, you have to get dressed then. You have to be like, you know. <laughs> you know I, I would be wanting to say, pant down if I let's see your shoes today. Yeah. So, Whitney, it has always been a pleasure. I hear sweet. Thank you. Having you with us. Um, you know, this is the second time that you've been mm -hmm. with the Jacksonville Youth Council. Um, the e cigarettes for the first one. Yes. So, the danger is still dangerous today. <laughs> They're dangerous, dangerous. Yeah. Um, so let's give Miss Whitney a hand. I will thank you very much. I, I thank you for that, and I am very appreciative, and I'm very humbled in to be invited because I think that y'all are truly the masterminds of our future, and y'all don't even realize it yet because y'all are going to go out into the world and you're going to make a difference. You're going to make a difference in one person's life. Or a whole lot of people's lives. But if you impact one person's life and you change that one person, that person's going to carry that thought or idea forward for you. And you've really actually created a legacy. So what y'all do here as a council actually impacts more people than you can ever imagine. And, and y'all do this because it's significant to y'all. Yeah, it can be look good on your little application for college. But it's also impactful because what it teaches you is leadership skills, mm -hmm. collaborative skills, patience. As you dealt with the old lady today, you know, nah, 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 you know. But but also it also shows that y'all can see things similarly, you can see things differently, and you can be impacted by an incident, just a simple spinning of the twister. All of a sudden you realized that there is a significance to COVID and the three W's because mm -hmm. of how suddenly, because what I've learned is is until it impacts people individually, usually it just doesn't. It doesn't, right. It's not as significant, but when you have a, live, a living example, like a game and you play it, and all of a sudden, if the focus becomes on a colored dot and what that colored dot means to a group of people and how suddenly even their lives are even more isolated, um, if, we don't, if we don't continue to have positive COVIDs, then those things can be relaxed and then we can go, we can move outward rather than having to continue to Awesome. Thank you for having me. Y'all are awesome. I appreciate y'all. And I appreciate this fine lady because, you know, it takes somebody like this to orchestrate this. <laughs> my supervisor, she's a saint because she just, like, orchestrates me. Okay, my pocketbook is under the table here, so I'm going to leave y'all and let y'all have the rest of your meeting. And I thank you for what y'all do again. And if y'all have any questions, I'm real easy to find. I'm literally the only Whitney in the CHS building. <laughs> so I'm the only child health immunization supervisor in the building. And I'm the only child health nurse that sees kids every day in the building. So I think I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> y'all have a blessed evening. And thank you again for having me. Thank you, Ms. Whitney. Thank you for what y'all do. All right. Bye. All right. See you, Whitney. Well, ladies and gentlemen. We have come towards the end of our meeting. Uh, one of the great things that we have to prepare for as we are streaming through Facebook and YouTube. So, yes, we are also on YouTube. Um, so we appreciate anyone that has tuned in, any family, any friends, any youth council members. We definitely appreciate you. Um, great meeting. If there's any comments that have been left behind, we'll be able to look at it after the meeting. Uh, one thing that we do have coming up is December will be where we semi-elect. It's going to be different. <laughs> it's going to be different because this December will be Tamara's last meeting as chairman. She, <laughs> as a senior and as a two-term chairman, she will not be able to run again as chair. 
And so we will be having elections across the board. So any members of the youth council that are interested in being an officer, we will send out an email. So check your email, check your text message. Um, so that way you can alert me into what position you're interested in running in. And then we will plan for December to do something. We'll figure <laughs> out something on how we're gonna vote and do our ballots. But I appreciate y'all um, definitely going through. And any ideas that you have for our December meeting, send it to us via email and we'll look into a guest speaker. Is there any last minute, um, any updates, anything kind of happening amongst your school that we need to be aware of? That's Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at our school, we recently had a few people get accepted into colleges. Okay. But our main person that has been accepted to our college is our only girl wrestler, Sky Cavallero. She got accepted into St. Was it St. Mary's in Kansas? Oh, wow. University. And that's a remind the public what school is this? Southwest High School. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Any other updates? Uh, football has been pushed to February now. Okay. And our girls' golf season is now combined with boys' golf season. All right. Is that going to start in February too, or is that now January? I think that's January now. January? Yeah. Okay. We're still not 100% sure on which month it is, but we're thinking late January. Okay. And our clubs have been officially pushed back to second semester. We're restarting our clubs total now. Now, second semester would be when? In about four weeks. December. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're so ready. <laughs> All right. Is there anything that you have, Madam Chair? Um, nothing really happening. Um, I would definitely like um, she was saying earlier. If you're a teen at home, like reach out to somebody because it's definitely a hard time. I think socially and mentally for people as well. So find a friend. Definitely, definitely. All right. So this meeting is now adjourned. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair.